Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. This is a core for Maths A level video and it's the fifth one on partial fractions in the case where there are three linear factors and one of those factors is repeated. As always, for more help with your maths, do check out the YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter or Google+. In this fifth tutorial, uh, we'll deal with the case I just talked about, three linear factors, one repeated. This is for the Edexcel course, but it's applicable to most other A-level modules. Just looking at um, the scheme of work for Edexcel, um, uh, we need to talk about partial fractions to include denominators such as the follower, three distinct linear and two distinct linear we've done. And in this video, we'll be talking about whether there are three factors, but one of these factors is repeated. Okay, so let's do this straight away by looking at uh, the rule for this. The third rule with partial fractions, an expression with a repeated linear factor on the denominator can always be split up into partial fractions as follows a number over the first distinct factor, another number over the second factor, and a number over the second factor squared. Always turns out like this. Again, this only works when the order of the top is smaller than the order of the bottom. We have a quadratic here, and on the bottom we have three um, lots of x brackets multiplied together, so we've got a cubic. It works in this case. Right, let's do an example straight away. Example one, we want to express the following in partial fractions. Now we're in the case talked about, we've got a quadratic on top, we've got a cubic on bottom, so the top's got a smaller order than the bottom. 2x plus 1 is one factor, x plus 1 and x plus 1, two repeated other linear factors. So therefore we can say the following, that 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 all divided by, I actually prefer writing it with the, the standalone linear factor first, so I'm going to write it like that. I prefer writing it like that. It doesn't matter, but it just makes it easier for me. And I can say this is therefore equal to some number over the first factor plus some other number to find over the x plus 1 and some other no number to find over x plus 1 squared. Now this is where it's a tiny bit different to previous videos. If we made the denominators the same, we would only have a 2x plus 1, x plus 1 squared, okay, on the bottom. So therefore, the tops, for the tops to be equal, I'll just talk you through this. I'm skipping a line here, but hopefully you understand. This would have to be just multiplied by x plus 1 squared on top and bottom for it to have the right denominator. So you'd have that there. Now this one would need to be multiplied by one of the x plus ones and a 2x plus one. So it would need the following. And this last one here just would need to be multiplied by 2x plus one. So that's our second line. Okay, so what we could do is we could type that in our calculator, 11x squared plus 14x plus five. And let's do some substitutions. What x's will eliminate things? Well, if I let x equal negative 1, this side here would turn out to be 2. This would disappear, this would disappear, and this here would turn out to be uh, negative 2 plus 1, which is negative uh, c. So therefore, c must be negative 2. Right, if we let x now be, uh, let's say, negative a half, because I want to make this zero, I want to make this bracket zero, and x being negative a half will do that for me. So if I substitute negative half in here, I get three quarters. Okay, so I would get three quarters for this. Now, uh, this would disappear and this would disappear. Negative a half uh, plus this would be a half and half squared is a quarter, so I get a quarter a. And therefore times it by four, this would tell me that a must be equal to uh, three. And lastly, what else could I let x be? 
Well, the only other thing, uh, nothing else would eliminate, so why don't I choose something simple like x be 0? If x is 0, this side would be 5. This side here would just be a, but we know a is 3, so we'd have 3 there. This side here, well, this would be um, just b. And this here, if x was 0, we just have a c, but we know c is negative 2. So therefore, uh, we would have... Uh, from this, that 5 is equal to 1 plus b, and we would have that therefore b is equal to 4. Okay, and we'd finish off by then writing out our final answer. So this thing here is what we started with. Okay, so we'd write that out. We just paste that here. Apologies. Paste that here. And we would say this is therefore equal to or identical to, well, what was our a? Our a was 3, so 3 over 2x plus 1. What was our b? Our b was 4, so plus 4 over x plus 1. And what was our c? Our c was negative 2, so subtract 2 over x plus 1 squared. And we'd be done in that regard. So that would be the answer in partial fractions. And that's it for this video. So what I'd like you to do is just make sure you've re read page 6 in the book and then do exercise 1D, all those questions as good practice. Thanks for watching.